Last week we were looking at the Shema uh, under the Old Covenant in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6. Hear, O Israel, uh, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Hekat. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And Israel's given uh, guidelines, prescriptions, uh, statutes, rules um, to govern their life under this principle. And the greatest commandment, uh, part of the Shema, to hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, strength, and soul. And Jesus picks up this idea within the New Testament. And uh, we, we noted that if asked what the most important verse in the Bible is, we might turn someplace like John 3.16 uh, or elsewhere. But here within uh, the Old Testament and within the Gospels on the lips of Jesus, uh, the most important thing that we can do uh, is to recognize that the Lord our God is one uh, and we are to love him with all that we have. One of the practices that Israel was given uh, in order to love God well is Sabbath, the idea of rest. It's one of the Ten Commandments to remember the Sabbath day uh, and to keep it holy. And Sabbath and idea of rest comes out of the very opening chapters of uh, the Bible in Genesis. In this Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse 1, we have, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth, in verse 2, was formless and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And then in the following verses, we have God uh, speaking into existence, uh, creation, uh, as recorded for us in Genesis 1 and into Genesis 2. And often the, the climactic event in this creation account is uh, noted in Genesis 1, verse 26. Then God said, Let us make hum humanity uh, in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind. Uh, in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And then we often go on to note uh, that God looked at everything that he had made, uh, including now humanity, and said that it was very good. But I wonder uh, if the climactic event uh, in creation actually uh, is in the opening verses of chapter 2 of Genesis. Uh, where we read, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And there's a wholeness here in Genesis 2, verse 1. If you remember in Genesis 1, verse 1, we have, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. Um, and we have this chaotic void in Genesis 1, 1. And in 2, 1, we have a a completion of things being seen, that the heavens and the earth are finished and all their multitude are in their wholeness uh, compared to the chaos or the formlessness or the void. And on the seventh day, when God finished the work that he had done, he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. I wonder if that's not the climactic event, that God has finished all of this work and now he is resting. And this is the first image and picture of rest that we find uh, in scripture and it's God resting. What an example for us that God himself rests. And as we work through Genesis and then to Exodus and the giving of the law, we find that Sabbath is a central part of Israel's call to rest 
and to remember the God, their God, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, this God rested. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 15. Deuteronomy 5 and verse 15, we get another piece or another image of this importance of Sabbath and the centrality of Sabbath for Israel. And in Deuteronomy 5, 15, Moses writes, Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. For this reason, I lay this command upon you today. And the command that's being given to them is one of rest. And the reason that they are to remember to rest, the reason that they are to remember to take Sabbath, the reason that they are to remember is that you were a slave in Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you. For this reason, I command or lay this commandment upon you today. And the call is to rest, to remember the concept of Sabbath. And we rest in God. We rest in our God, our one God. And now for us under the New Testament, we rest in the finished work of God in Christ. So our rest is a recognition of a God who rests. And it is a recognition of a God who has redeemed us, a God who has saved us again now in and through Christ. And so we rest. We do not need to toil and strive and pursue something God has given to us. It's given as a gift and rest in it. Let me jump uh, back to Exodus for a moment. Exodus chapter 20, uh, verses 8 to 11. Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11. And we read, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day to the Lord your God. And you shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it or made it holy. And this is the, the fourth command here within uh, the Ten Commandments as rendered in Exodus chapter 20. And they're called to rest. And it goes back again to Genesis in the Genesis account. Rest. Rest on this day. Uh, for in seven days, or in six days, the Lord created the world. And on the seventh day, he rested. And the call is not to do any work. You, you probably recall or it will come to mind the times within the New Testament where Jesus uh, performed healings and miracles and or fed people or cared for people on the Sabbath. Uh, and he was rebuked by the religious leaders, by the uh, Pharisees, uh, because it was seen as working on the Sabbath. But there's an interesting uh, and important distinction to be made on the understanding of work and what work meant on the Sabbath. And work uh, is to do something for personal profit, benefit, or gain. And so you want to stop striving to provide for yourself. You want to stop striving to get ahead, to stop working for the purpose of advancement. And caring for a neighbor is a different kind of work. Uh, then you are helping another in need. You're benefiting another person who uh, is in need of help. And, and that's not the same kind of work that is prohibited on the Sabbath. And so to remember the Sabbath day and to cease from working on the Sabbath day is to reorient us once again, and it's so important in our culture, to reorient us once again uh, that material things and consumption and earning more and getting ahead and building bigger and better is not the purpose or the point of our lives. So Sabbath is a stepping back from the busyness of advancement, of production, of consumption, and resting in the provision of God. And it's an invitation into the important element and an important element in the kingdom of God 
And that is that it operates on a different set of values. Uh, one that isn't about physical gain and or advancement or wealth or production. Uh, but really is a day in and day out, seven days a week, of seeing the world differently. Sabbath reorients us to life in the kingdom of God, resting on the provision of God and recognizing there are more important things than the physical, the material, than growth, production, consumption, advancement. So Sabbath is a key element for us. And as we hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Elohenu, Adonai Akkad. Rest, Sabbath, is a way to keep our lives oriented around this truth. So might the Lord lead us into uh, more fully and completely in the days to come, uh, the importance of rest and resting in him and resting in the finished work of Christ uh, to his praise and to his glory. Amen.